We're here at the ALEC convention in New Orleans with our old friend Saul Anousis. Now, Saul, you have a million titles, but you're also on the NRA Board's Public Affairs Committee. You've got a lot going on. Talk about your work with the NRA uh, Public Affairs Committee. So uh, I've been privileged enough for the last uh, six presidents have appointed me on the on the uh, board to sit on the committees. As, as you're aware, we, we elect... Uh, like 68 of our board members, and then there's six to eight of us who are appointed by the current president to serve on various boards. So uh, the last, I believe, six presidents have now appointed and reappointed me to sit on the Public Affairs Committee. And, uh, you know, I've been a longtime NRA lifetime member and activist, and so I'm, you know, very proud and privileged to be able to serve on the board. Well, it's good to see you, good to have you talking about that. Okay, so we're in front of the booth here, National Popular Vote. That's one of the, the first things we'll talk about that you're involved with. Talk about that because, you know, we have the Electoral College. Right. We, we, of course, see the left saying Hillary Clinton won, et cetera, et cetera. Give us the 30-second, give us the elevator speech on popular vote. Yeah, so the elevator speech is very simple. We keep the Electoral College, but rather than using the statewide uh, results on the winner take all, we use a national popular vote. So I, I actually bl I agree with President Trump on this, Newt Gingrich agrees with us on this, is that if every American in every, every state vote counted in every election, it would make a difference, right? So take a look at the NRA as an example. We have 52 million Second Amendment supporters in this country. On any given election year, we turn out 25 to 35 million based on the targeted seats, the targeted states, and who's up running for president where the, where the battleground states are. If we had a national popular vote, it would be in our best interest to turn out all 52 million Second Amendment supporters, right? And we could make a difference in presidential elections. I think we're a center-right nation. I think more people share our values than theirs. So for me, I would like to have a national popular vote rather than having states like Florida and Ohio have disproportionate amount of influence rather than having you know, all 50 states have, have equal influence with regards to voters. So a voter in Ohio would be as relevant as a voter in Rhode Island or California. People want to find out more. Obviously, it's a huge topic. It's lots yeah. of debates about it. Where, where should people go to learn more about that? So just go to nationalpopularvote.com, and there's all kinds of information up there and, and questions and answers. There's a We call it a myth section. On ch uh, it's Chapter 9 in our book, and it really talks about what did the founders say, what's the constitutional background, what's the historical background to it. And it is a fascinating subject conservatives ought to take a look at. Right, well, as if you don't have enough to do, you're also the president of 60 plus. I am. Uh, talk about that organization. Obviously, uh, AARP has been the dominant uh, right. force in that space for a long time now. But there's a, there's a need for conservatives to have their own uh, organization uh, that do similar things to AARP. A absolutely. So so 60 plus, which is the American Association of Senior Citizens, was founded 26 years ago by by a Marine named Jim Martin. Uh, Jim is still the chairman. Uh, I took over as president this year, and and uh, next year take over as president and CEO of the organization. And uh, we are the conservative alternative to ARP. Uh, we get involved in public policy perspective uh, issues in Washington and in states, but we take a conservative perspective. So we back a free market. We want things done in a conservative way. We back conservative values. Um, obviously, we are un, you know, unabashedly pro-life, pro-gun, uh, basically most of the conservative issues that are out there. And so we're looking at trying to set up an organization that actually competes uh, politically with them in Washington and elsewhere and uh, we're starting for the first time here uh, Labor Day we're going to be launching a new website that actually has affinity marketing stuff where we'll have the same kind of discounts right. you can get at ARP everything else if you're a conservative if you're a Republican come to 60 plus.org and you can take a look at it there and get some of the same same deals or better deals and support a conservative organization rather than one of the most liberal ones in the country. How much of a hit did they take when their vocal support of Obamacare and other things like that? I think they took a big hit, look, but there was no alternative, right? So what happens is that you're kinda, you, you, you go there on a natural basis. Uh, AR, I mean, heck, I'm an AARP member because of the discounts. It makes sense. It, it's, a, it's a cheap way to save money on, on car rentals, on hotels, and all that kind of stuff. Now we're gonna have a conservative alternative, and I think that makes a big difference. And, you know, AARP makes, I think, like, Six hundred million dollars a year on on selling insurance. I mean, it's really an insurance company more than it is an association. But then they take very liberal positions. So we need somebody on the right to challenge that to, to be able to make a, a difference in Congress and and in a lot of state capitals. And that's what we're starting to do. So you're an old hand at Republican politics. You've been in the back rooms, the deals, the, the, the you see how the sausage has been made for a long time now. Talk about November. How do you feel? Well, look, I think it's going to be a matter of turnout. Uh, I think that most side, both sides have been pretty much identified. I mean, you're either for Trump or against Trump. Right. You're for the Republicans, against the de Republicans. The difference is that our side is satisfied. We're, we, we think the Supreme Court justice appointments were critical. The circuit court adjustment uh, appointments have been 
fantastic. You couldn't ask for a better uh, president with regards to judicial appointments. Uh, if you take a look at our issues on the NRA, as an example, the president's been fantastic. Uh, if you take a look at you know the tax cuts and the, and the things the Republicans have done, everybody's happy on our side. Happiness doesn't motivate people to vote. Right. What motivates really people to vote is the ones who are pissed <laughs> off, right. right? So the left is mad. So, you know, you could take a look at like Ed Gillespie's race in Virginia. I mean, he turned out about 120, 125% of the Republican vote, got more votes than any Republicans ever gotten for governor and lost mm -hmm. because the Democrats turned out about 180% of their vote, right? Their people are motivated. So as an NRA member, as a conservative across the country, we've got to remember to go out and vote. Uh, I think what's going to be the determinant factor is turnout. If Republicans turn out and vote and make sure that they uh, uh, elect people who are going to support the president, the president's agenda. Look, even if you don't like the president personally, if you don't like his style, look at his policies. It's hard to find fault with most of his policies. And in order for him to have those implemented across the country, we need our voters to turn out. So, so I think November is going to be purely a function of turnout. If our voters show up to the polls, I think we're going to have a good election. If our voters stay home or just casually vote and the Democrats and the liberals and the progressives and the crazies <laughs> on their side come out and do what they're doing, they're going to knock out enough of our guys that we could be spending the next two years dealing with impeachment, right. um, stopping all our judges, all that kind of stuff. I mean, th this is a very important election for us. And, and I think that people just have to be you know, cognizant of the fact that their vote matters. Uh, we have... You know, the Democrats have to win 23 seats. I think you could take a look and very easily count 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 that the Democrats win. Hard to get to 23, especially if our voters get out. On the Senate side, we actually have pickup opportunities. So if you take a look at Montana, you take a look at Virginia, you take a look at uh, Missouri, you take a look at North Dakota, take a look at Mon uh, uh, Indiana. In those states in particular, there's five, six, seven states, I guarantee you the NRA is going to play big in those states. We'll be involved there. Um, those are the places we've got to call, turn out and vote because we can make a difference. And that would make a huge difference for the president's agenda. And it will also defend our Second Amendment rights, make sure we get good judges in the future. When you see someone like uh, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, who is the, the left, love the media, right. they can't get enough of her, the talk shows. I, I, you guys ought to put her on. She's uh, she's, yeah, she's a great spokesman for our side. Right. Um, do you think she's a problem or just a novelty? I think she's a novelty, but a great opportunity for us. I mean, she's exposing what the Democrats really stand for. I mean, you've got Bernie Sanders and her going out talking about pure socialism. I mean, remember, government cannot give anything to anybody until it first takes it away from somebody else, right? So we're trying to protect and defend the taxpayer's agenda, the ones who pay the bill. Those of us who go out and work for a living day in and day out, pay our taxes. I mean, if you take a look at their Medicare for All proposal, if you double the corporate tax rate for every corporation that pays taxes today and doubled every American's tax rate, you still wouldn't pay for that program alone, let alone get rid of the $19 trillion Obama deficit. So it is an unbelievably expensive program. It is unrealistic, but you know their, their political philosophy is fairly simple. If you rob Peter to pay Paul, you can count on Paul's support. Okay, those of us who work for a living and pay taxes, we're the Peters of the world, and their voters are coming in as Paul's who are trying to get a freebie. And it, eventually, you know, you and I may not pay, but our children and grandchildren will get stuck with this bill. And that's a horrible way to run a government. All right, so as we wrap it up here, you're talking, and, and, and there's a lot of viewers and listeners in the NRA, passionate about the Second Amendment. You know, talk about it again. You know, the, the, if the House goes over the Democrats, the Second Amendment, uh, you know, there's going to be a lot of trouble. Absolutely. Look, there is no more important thing we can do as NRA members and as supporters of the Second Amendment is to get out and vote this time around. There are at least 30 to 45 congressional districts that are competitive districts that the Democrats have to go after. They need to win 23, and they've got a competitive advantage in probably 9 to 13 of them. On the Senate side, again, if you live in Indiana, Missouri, North Dakota, Montana, Virginia, you know, and Florida, and then you got states like Michigan that are long shots and a couple others that give us opportunities. I mean, if we could pick up some of those Senate seats, make a night and day difference for our agenda in protecting the Second Amendment and also in making sure that the president has people in there to support us with judges, uh, with policies that make a difference for all Americans. You talk about uh, the states, talk about Indiana, talk about Alaska, talk about uh, West Virginia, just in terms of uh, Judge Kavanaugh. Absolutely. The, the need for, for those people to get in contact with their senators and have yeah. uh, Judge well, Kavanaugh confirm. I think it doesn't matter what state you live in, everybody should call their senator and tell them the president, A, deserves the right to appoint his, uh, you know, Supreme Court justice. Elections have consequences. Remember, Ruth Bader Ginsburg was was uh, uh, confirmed with like 92 votes. 
I mean, Republicans and Democrats voted. You know, the president won. It was his appointment. Out of a courtesy, especially in the, in the beginning of the presidential years, that's the way it works, right? They have these. Uh, right now, the Democrats are playing politics. They're trying to stir up their base. Um, we have to be careful. We have to let them know that we're paying attention, that whether, you're, whether you have a Democrat senator or a Republican senator, you should call and say, look, the president deserves his nominee. We encourage you to support the nominee. Um, and, you know, when they say, well, they were held up by, you know, the last nominee was held up in election year. I mean, when, when, when Trump is up in his you know, last six months, okay, now it makes sense to politically oppose him. But this man is in his first, second year of, of, the, of his presidency, making a very important appointment. The Democrats are holding up hundreds of judges, literally hundreds of judges. And the idea that we're going to let him get away with this in Kavanaugh is crazy. So call your U.S. Senator, encourage him to support the nomination. Again, we've got somebody who supports the Second Amendment, someone who would support our position. I think it's a very important thing. But most important, make sure you vote in November. You've got to get out there and vote in November. So I know you're very busy online with social media and your emails. How do people get in touch with you? So if, uh, if you go to um, Saul's News, so S-A-U-L-S-N-E-W-S dot com, uh, I've got an, I've, I post conservative articles every day. Uh, I've got a, a newsletter that goes out every Sunday uh, there. You can sign up for it, uh, basically sharing conservative views and, and what's happening in the country. And, um, you know, you can find me on Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter. I'm, I'm, as you said, I'm very active on social media. I respond. Uh, you can even call me, and I'll, I'll, I'll give you a call back. But uh, And soon you'll be seeing us on 60plus.org, which will be a, my primary place that I start playing here in the next six months or so. Good deal. Thanks for your time, Saul. Yeah, great to be with you.